afternoon everyone welcome to Karen's kitchen I found a recipe for another hint of uh, hummus on Pinterest there's Erlene there's my daughter this is a banana bread um, uh, hummus and it's ah uh, it should be awesome good to see you sweetie and, and I'm going to, I'm going to give it a whirl we're gonna see you could you could uh, dip graham crackers in it um, cookies in it there's Vanita Good afternoon. Good to, good to see everybody. I was just in Forerunner Scope. I wanted to wait for him to get done before I came on. So, um, good mor good afternoon, Vanita. Let me go ahead and share this out. And um, then I'll ask for a share, as I always do. And I thank everybody for sharing this out and, and being here for me each and every day, because I do appreciate it very, very much. Um, you guys are awesome. Uh, I'm logged out of Twitter, so I can't log out. I know for some reason I'm logged out of Twitter, so I'll just do it on Facebook for right now. Okay. No. Um, hi, good to see you. I, I tried to log into Twitter this morning. It's logged me out for some reason, but you guys might be able to go on Twitter, but I can't. But anyway, let me go ahead and ask for a share. I guess I'll have to go back when I get done here and connect back up to Twitter. Anyway, this is a banana bread um, hummus. This is going to Hi, Cheryl. Good to see you. Um, everybody that's coming in, wow, thank you everybody for coming in. Um, we all know it takes it takes one can of chickpeas and these have since, hi, good to see you. These have since been um, rinsed and drained, or drained and rinsed, if you drain them first and then rinse them, they rinse them real well. Then it takes two tablespoons of coconut oil, and I've got that measured out here. And I didn't, I didn't melt it or anything. This is all going to be done in my food processor. The lady that created this has been looking for different, different ways to make hummus. And she said it turned out real good. She said her kids love it and everything. You probably eat it just the way it is without even dipping it in anything. Huh. Okay. Let me see here. Um, got two semi-ripe bananas. Well, these are a little probably a little more ripe than they should be. But I'm going ahead and use them for the simple fact that they're going to only get worse. I could put them in the freezer, but I've got plenty up there right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and use these. i got some new bananas, and they're not what you call real ripe. They're not as ripe as these, so I didn't want to use those. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in here. These aren't real black, so they should be fine. Let me throw these out. Whoops. Oh, my darn... I hate that one. My when I okay, there it went. Um, my my thing disappeared. Um, three quarter cup of walnuts. Okay, that three quarter cup of walnuts. I think I, yeah, I measured them out already. And one teaspoon of, of uh, cinnamon. Uh, and we and everybody knows I use cardamom, so I'll just uh, I gotta find my teaspoon in here. Um, here's one. all clean that what happened. Teaspoon of cinnamon. Right. I use cardamom instead, so I'll split that out. Just about out of this. I guess I should have got some today and I didn't think about it. Well I guess I don't have any cardamom at all. I don't have any cinnamon either. So i I got a little bit and I'll just use what I've got in here. It's at the very very bottom. I should have I should have got some today. Well it is what it is. I'll just use what I got. Okay, now, then I use uh, one teaspoon of no, no alcohol vanilla, and I've got that here. So everything's going to be done up in the food processor. Then you blend it until it's really smooth. Let me get my lid on. Make sure this is going to be okay before I. It's pretty good consistency. Don't really, probably don't want to do it that much more. It's already already mixed up. Let me uh, 
get my container. Take this off. Love this. Now you can see what it looks like. Isn't that awesome? Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the container I have out. I think this one will work. Take my blade off. Take my blade off. <laughs> Those that came in here, Erlene, didn't see you come in, welcome. Cheryl, everybody that's in here, welcome. For, for Thank you for coming in and uh, being here. I had good good lunch today. Um, I made a tomato soup in the Vitamix, and then I fixed me uh, three years of sweet corn that I bought at the store in my quick cooker. So I had a nice lunch, so I'm, so I'm full. <laughs> um, I'll probably eat some ice cream a little bit later. But... Uh, I want to make my tomato soup and my Vitamix because I'm used to that. So I want to do that. Even though it's hot, I still like the tomato soup anyway. And I ate it all up. Just one small little bowl anyway. Okay. This ought to taste real good. Use it with graham crackers. Um, let me put this down so you can see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. I always forget that. There we go. Wow, this looks awesome. And I've never heard of banana, hi, good to see you. I've never heard of banana bread hummus. And there's also another hummus that I'm going to do one, get one of these days. And it's a chocolate peanut butter hummus. I've got the recipe for that one too. I mean, I guess there's a lot of hummuses out there, all made with chickpeas. you got to have the chickpeas for that. I mentioned this to Earlene when I, she was texting me when I was gone. Um, now she said, well, you know, that sounds interesting. It does. It sounds interesting. It's, it's a whole different recipe. Let me try it on there. Hmm. Yeah. Very, very good. I can let you see. What do you think of that? There is my... And I can get a graham cracker and try it and see what you think. We'll see what I think of it. You can dip graham crackers in it. You can have... Any kind of cookies you have. Yeah. You all you got that right. That is awesome. When I thought banana bread hummus, I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah, pita bread. Yeah, you can actually probably take your graham cracker and spread this right on it if you want them to. Yeah, it is. It's a sweet hummus because it's got walnuts in it. It's got your, um, it's got coconut oil in it. Um, let me give you the recipe. Yes, it is. It's a sweet hummus because it's got your walnuts in it. It's got your, of course, you've got your can of chickpeas. That's the normal thing. You got to have the chickpeas in there. That's the normal thing you have in there. Uh, let me go back and find the recipe. It should be loading back up. Yeah, there it comes. And I'll tell you what I have in it. I know I've got a can of chickpeas, and I've got three quarter, um, three quarter cup of uh, walnuts. This is one. Here it goes. Okay. This is what it, this is what it looks like. Doesn't that look awesome? Look at that. Look at that. That's awesome. Of course, you can probably, if you want to, you can take more walnuts and put up on top. Um, but it's got walnuts inside, so I thought just, and this is what it looks like when it's in the, in the uh, food chopper, food processor. Um, you can put this, they said you can use this for graham crackers, apple slices, um, pretzels, animal crackers, and she said she, she had some ginger snap cookies, so she used, she used ginger snap. There you can show, she's showing a picture of ginger snap cookies, dipping it in, the ginger snap cookie dipping into it. So um, you, can, you can use different things for it. Okay, it's got one can of chickpeas, um, rinsed and drained, two tablespoons of coconut oil, she decided to use that instead of olive oil. Two semi-ripe bananas. I think my bananas were a little more riper than they should be, but that's okay because this makes it sweeter anyway. A three-quarter cup of walnuts, and they were chopped walnuts already. One teaspoon of cinnamon, which I didn't have the cinnamon. I have the cardamom, so I used what I had of that. Oh, yeah, they do. And one teaspoon of no-alcohol vanilla. And that's all that's in here. That is all that's in here. What, what do you think of that? Doesn't that look good? 
Have you ever heard of a, a banana bread hummus? I know I have it. You know, ah. Oh. Uh, no, because I don't eat regular chicken, so I don't know. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. This is good. Mmm, mmm. I can't tell you no. I'm, I'm a vegan, so I don't talk about meat in here. Um. Yeah. Look at that. What do you think of that? Doesn't that look awesome? Um. I'm, I'm really pleased with this recipe. This is awesome. You know, wow. What you don't, what you don't find when you go on Pinterest, you know? Ah, yeah. <laughs> it is scrumptious. It is very scrumptious. Yeah, it is. It is scrumptious. It really is. If I, I know you might probably meant to say scrumptious and you scrumpy. Huh, that's okay. But it does. It uh, It is very good. And taking the graham cracker, you could probably, like I said, you could spread spread it on the graham cracker as well. Mm. <laughs> Got you there. I I got. Hi, Missy. Look at this. Banana bread hummus. Isn't this awesome? Got walnuts in it. Coconut oil. Oh yeah, with pears. Absolutely. I don't have any pears right now, but it would be good, right? So this is definitely going up on my vegan Facebook page, and I want to see what people. The variety they come up with of what they're eating it with, you know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. A new dish that I've never made before. Um, let me go ahead and put this back and get this out of my way. It is a wild dish. So whoever said that, you're right. It's a wild dish. I mean, you know me. I'm always coming up with new recipes. And when I saw this, my daughter asked me what I was going to do today. And I says, well, I found a uh, banana bread hummus. I didn't have the chickpeas, so I had to go buy some. Of course, Erlene, she laughed at that. And she says, I've got a whole case of them. Well, her case of chickpeas doesn't do me any good. So I just went and bought a few cans of it. You know, a couple low-sodium ones and one regular one. And... You don't even taste the chickpeas either. You don't don't taste them at all. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. Look at my hummus. This is a banana bread hummus, and it does. It tastes just like banana bread. This is awesome. This is awesome. It really is. If you're if you like hummus, you're really gonna like this. It's very good flavor. Tastes really good. You've got a can of chickpeas, and we all know that's the staple. They, that's the main item. Um, my daughter's trying to find a hummus that, oh yeah, it is. Uh, my daughter likes to find a hummus that doesn't take tahini. I says, well, there's a lot of them out there that don't take tahini. This is one of them that doesn't take tahini. So she can even make this herself. You know, get walnuts and chickpeas and that. Oh, does it? Really? Oh. Anyway. This is a different one, and that the chocolate peanut butter one, I saved that one too, and I, I plan on making that maybe next week. I saw that one, I thought, that'd be an awesome hummus too. Chocolate peanut butter. Whoa. Mm. Oh, does it? Oh, no. Well, this you can mix um, graham crackers, ginger snaps, you say animal crackers, Apple slices, maybe some pear slices. You can do, or you can put them. You can put it right on the apple or pear. You can dip the graham crackers in it. You can also spread it on the graham crackers. That is awesome. You can you can find different sweet things to put uh, to. Uh... Yeah, you might be able to put it on sweet potatoes. That would be awesome, really. It would be a total different flavor, wouldn't it? Oh yes, it would. You know, you can find a lot of things to do with it. Um, It is. It, it's really yummy. Uh, oh, yeah, I know. My daughter's being quiet today, and I, I, I know why, but I won't go into it. Um, banana bread, sweet potatoes. Now, there you go. Now, you know, I, I don't really care for sweet potatoes very well. Not by themselves, but you put them in a recipe, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm up with sweet potatoes there, but this sounds good. That would make the sweet potatoes really taste good, wouldn't it? 
Banana bread is good anyway. I've made banana bread before. It is so good. It's so awesome. But you taste this, and it's almost like biting into a slice of banana bread. Um, it's so good. It really is. I was really, I'm really pleased with this recipe. I wanted to try it, and I thought, this has got to be good. Um, it really, man, it's got a good flavor. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're all going to like this. Absolutely. Mm. Very simple to make. And get yourself a, um, yeah, right. Um, yeah, there are some like that. This is like a, an unbaked banana bread. You know, you don't, you know, just take the, taking the dough and making, making something out of it. That's right, kid test them. I'm sure any child, even my grandsons might like this. Because they like bananas. They might even like this hummus. I know my daughter loves hummus. So they might even like this. Because it's so simple to make. Not hard. You know, it's got all good things in it. You know, she decided, the lady that, that make, wrote this recipe, she decided to use um, coconut oil instead of olive oil. Put that, which I think is a little bit better anyway. Because coconut oil is better for you. But oh my goodness. Look at, I mean, just... I just can't get over how, how good this is and how, what it looks like. This is awesome. It, it, it really is. Um, uh, yeah, you, if you don't have coconut oil, you could probably try avocado oil. I, oh, you're not sure? Yeah. Straw. Oh, definitely strawberries. Definitely strawberries. Oh, yes. You could dip strawberries into it as well. Um, any of your fruits like apples and pears. Um, if you want to take a, a banana and, and dip dip into it, you can do that too. Um, hummus is, is a staple in a lot of people's homes. And I'm always trying to find different ways to make hummus. Um, oh, that's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> oh boy, I bet it will. Anybody that's got a family will go fast. Now, this is going to go fast for me because I'm, I'm by myself, but I love hummus when it's like this. You know, and I love graham crackers and I'll probably just spread it on the graham cracker and just eat it, you know, because the graham crackers I got don't have a lot of ingredients in them anyway. Um, they're sort of vegan, semi-vegan maybe, but anyway, this is so good. Um, you, you, can find, you can try to make it yourself and see how you like it. Um, oh yes, she does, Vanita. Yes, um, she has it uh, attached to my Facebook page, not my vegan Facebook page. But my Facebook, she's got it. You can go in there, go to my daughter's profile, though, and then you'll see that she shared it with, uh, tagged me in it. So you'll find it on my Facebook page, so then you can go and, you know, if you want to. Um, anyway, what's everybody's weather doing today? We are going to be 80, I think, in the 80s. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I don't really care for dark chocolate. I like milk chocolate better. However, since I'm a vegan, I don't use chocolate at all. What I use is carob. And carob is um, better than chocolate. It's natural. Um, and I use that for my anything I put a chocolate in. Um, oh, okay, Benita. Yes, carob works. Absolutely. Carob is a real good substitute for chocolate. Anything I make with chocolate in it, like brownies or whatever, I use carob powder, not chocolate. Or I use carob chips. It all works. You use what works. But if somebody wants to make this, and they prefer to use um, av avocado oil instead of coconut oil, you can do that too, um, because uh, that would, you know, that's mild. I think the reason she didn't use olive oil is because the EVOO is a very strong. Now you probably, if you get light. Um, extra virgin olive, uh, olive oil would be better, but the real strong one, the one that's organic and the, it's very, very strong. So, and I don't think that's why she used it because you taste, because you can taste that strong olive oil and stuff. So that's why she used coconut oil. Coconut oil is good for you anyway. It's mild, and I keep a lot of coconut oil on hand um, for that very reason. For a lot of the recipes that I make, calls for coconut oil. But um, so you try to make this and see what you think of it. I'm sure you're going to like it. But as I was as I was saying, what's everybody's weather doing today? I know we're on the we're going about about eighty something today, eighty four I think today. Um, a little um, not too bad, not real hot, not real not real. Um, oh, turn this up. Not real oh, not real hot, but not real real cold either. Um, 
I'm glad we're in the 80s. We're supposed to, we're supposed to be in the 90s next week, but it doesn't look like we're going to get that hot. Thank goodness. Oh, man, I can imagine. I know Alexis isn't in here, but I can imagine it's hotter, hotter than the blazes where she's at. Whew. I mean, I, I don't want to be in a real, real hot pivot. And I know uh, Erlene said it was 90 and it was hot there. Uh, yeah, I was just saying that, Erlene, you're hot. And she's out with Brandon. You know, she's got to go out with Brandon every day. So um, he walks around rain or snow. It can be raining outside and he'll walk around it. <laughs> oh, it's been storming since you talked to me. Oh, my goodness, only 75. That's ideal weather. That's awesome. But that's something we can use if there's a lot of rain. So send the rain our way. Um, I don't know if you heard about uh, the... I'm sure everybody did the the California earthquake. I was watching a Periscope yesterday that was that was uh, but I think it was ABC News was periscoping it, and somebody's house had caught on fire, and I thought that's awful. Oh, whoa, wow, wow, wow. Oh, hi, good to see you. Ninety nine degrees. You can keep it. That's a little bit high. Wow. Woo, that's really high. Hmm, man. I, I'll keep a, a kind of the temperature we have, um, but anyway, that that uh, California earthquake and it was a—they said it was the worst in 20 years. So my goodness, can you imagine that? I just—I don't know if anybody got killed. Has anybody heard if anybody got killed or not? But you—you you feel for the people that live in California because it, um, it, if they get so many earthquakes, you never know. And we could—we could easily get earthquakes here too, but I don't think they'd be at that magnitude. Uh, Oh, no, really? Wow. Oh, nobody got killed. Oh, thank goodness. But they had another one this morning. Oh, my goodness. Oh. They seem to get them, what, 7.4? They get them over 7, 7 on the Richter scale. So I can just imagine. And they get a lot of aftershocks, too. Um, it is terrible, the aftershocks that they have. And sometimes the aftershocks are bad, too. I, I, Siri came on. She she thought I was talking to her and I wasn't. I'm going to shut this thing off so Siri doesn't come on. Anyway, um, I bet you are. The Florida heat can be awful. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I can imagine all the bacteria. That's awful. That would be awful. And, and, uh, I don't know. I would, wouldn't mind... Uh, visiting Florida, but I'm not sure I want to live there. They're getting a lot of storms now, I heard, too. Um, one of the gals I follow on, on Periscope just moved to Florida, I think, in June or, or May, May or June. And uh, they're having a lot of storms there. And she was in Texas, and they were having a lot of storms there. And now she's in, in, in um, Florida, and they're still getting storms. Oh, hmm. Wow. It's, it's really it's really something, all these storms, you know, and, and earthquakes. But we know that we're going to get stuff like this at the end times, you know. It's nothing we can do about it. It's, it's part of it. You know, it, it's going to happen. You know, I'm just thankful that nobody was killed, you know. But as I was saying before, it can we can get earthquakes here. We get very mild ones because I've, I've sat been in my chair already and it starts just a little bit of uh, tremor. But then it, then it stops. They don't last very long here. Um, there's no fault line here, but there is one in Portland. However, I think if the Portland would get a bad one, it could easily come down here. So we're all 125 miles away. So we could come down here, and who knows what we could get. I mean, I used to live up in Vancouver, Washington, and being that's so close to Portland, it, you could really feel them when they got them. Um, and I, I, I was sitting at my computer once, and I was still in Vancouver, sitting at my computer, and the chair started rocking back and forth and I saw my monitor rocking and I could feel that tremor it was that it was a really bad one you know wow scary really scary I've been in bed already and, and we've had tremors um, six days knocked out wow six days knocked out because of the storm wow that's pretty bad whoa I bet you're glad to have that back you know I probably would go crazy if I didn't have it because there's so much I do on the internet I I go on Pinterest, however, I could go on my phone, um, you know, <coughs> but if your Wi-Fi is down, you can't put Wi-Fi on your phone either, I can't update it when I need to, but uh, yeah, it's, it's good that you have it back again, <laughs> you're probably, probably like a lot of people, you're solely lost when it goes out, 
you know, you haven't got it to, to uh, do anything with it. And I, I would kind of be lost without it in a way, too, um, because I do so much on Pinterest, uh, looking for recipes, and I go on YouTube and, and uh, check out videos there and stuff like that. So I would kind of miss it, although I can watch YouTube videos on my phone and my iPad as well, too. Um, I bet you were out of the loop. Yeah, you would be out of the loop with it down. Well, you must have had a terrible storm, though, getting that bad and, and losing your power like that. Must have knocked some lines down, too, huh? Some power lines? Because I, that's not uncommon in a lot of places to, to knock the, knock the uh, um, lines right out. Welcome to those who are just coming in. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for coming in. And uh, look at my hummus. Good to see you, Linda. This is my um, banana bread hummus. It has walnuts in it, it has a coconut oil, one can of chickpeas, um, two bananas, and it's awesome. It's really, really, um, it's really an awesome, it's really a sweet, you can use uh, this with uh, graham crackers, um, probably uh, ginger snap cookies, animal crackers, um, mm, real good. And you can't taste the chickpeas either, and it's, it's something. You can't taste the chickpeas. Somebody was asking me the other day on those brownies I made with the chickpea brownies, if you could taste the chickpeas. No, you couldn't. You can't taste the chickpeas in here either. Um, because they're all ground up real fine. Um, so, and I see crystals in here. Welcome, Crystal, Phyllis, those people coming in. Um, this is a versatile hummus. You could use it for um, apples, pears. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. Um, this is my hummus. It's a it's a bread <laughs> banana bread hummus that you can dip your um, fruits in, your graham crackers, ginger snaps, animal crackers, um, real sweet stuff that you have. If you've got apple slices, maybe pear slices. Um, I don't know if they would work on orange, but apples and pears it would work work real well on um, anything real sweet. Because this is a sweet hummus. There's another one that I'm going to do possibly next week or down the road sometime, and it's a chocolate peanut butter hummus. However, somebody said they had a chocolate hummus and it was kind of bitter. I uh, left an aftertaste, but I use carbs, so I don't know how that'll be. Um, oh, <laughs> what did you say, Erlene? Something about Brendan and chopped it and ate out now with Brendan. Okay. Oh, just a, uh, uh, yeah, I should. You know, 4th of July was just another day for me, too. I was a little concerned about the people shooting off fireworks around here. I thought, boy, if, if uh, Chewy hears that, he's going to go crazy. But fortunately for me, he fell asleep early, and when those fireworks were going off, he didn't even wake up and didn't flinch. You know, because I was afraid he'd wake up, he'd hear him, and he'd want to come in my bed. Well, I don't want to put him in my bed, but I would be so, so frightened for him, you know. Um, oh, losing connection. Um, Alexis was on last night, and if those of you that were in Alexis' scope, um, poor little Cooper, she showed Cooper, and he was just a shaken from those fireworks, because they were going off at the time she was periscoping, and it wasn't quite dark yet, but they were shooting them off. It's hard on the dog's ears, but you know, people don't think about that. They don't have respect for other people. They shoot them off till midnight, and there are people trying to sleep, and it's not really right, but we, they, they do it regardless, you know, and I'm glad it's over with. Because now I won't hear them again until New Year's Eve. They'll shoot them off on New Year's Eve. That's the, not, that's the next time they shoot them off. But around here, they used to shoot them off, baby, the 1st of July to the 4th. But they're not allowed to shoot them off for just one night. They're only allowed to shoot them off on the 4th of July, and that's it. Um, yeah, they, they, that travel is there pretty late around here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is only once a year, Linda. But the sad thing of it is, I'm always trying to sleep because I don't wait till midnight to go to bed. I go to bed earlier than that. And and I'm trying to sleep and there's things are boom, 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 boom. You know, and it's terrible. They have no respect for other people, you know, trying to get some sleep. And I hope that everybody that has animals left their animals in the house. Because there it has been known and it has been um, said before. And I've had, hi, Linda, good to see you, darling Linda that uh, animals will run away. If they're outside when the fireworks happen, they will run away because they're so scared. A lot of dogs are, are taken to shelters and, and uh, 
left there because they can't, you know, because of the fireworks. But my dogs are always in the house. Uh, oh, here, here they here they can shoot them off, but they have to stop at midnight. Here they shoot them off before it gets dark, but by midnight they have to stop. That's why we have an ordinance here. They can't. They have to stop by midnight. So they'll start shooting them off in 9, 30, 10 o'clock because we're dark by then. So they can, they can have a couple hours to shoot them off. Yeah, see, you're a little bit different there, Linda. You don't start shooting them off till midnight. But here, it's, it's they have to stop at midnight. And I've known some of them that'll, that'll go past midnight, almost 1 o'clock in the morning. And the thing of it is, the ones they're shooting off, we're not allowed to have those here because we don't have, we're not allowed to shoot any fireworks off that go in the air. And I think there, there's an ordinance of how high, but anyway, they, so they'll go across the state lines into Cal, into Washington State to get the bottle rockets, to get the whistlers, and things like that. And they're not supposed to have them. But if they ever get caught with them, they could have a, have a hefty fine. But the problem of it is there's way too many people to buy them, and they're never going to be able to catch everybody. Um, oh, even daylight? Oh, my goodness. There was somebody trying to shoot them off before it got, no, got dark last night, too, about 8 o'clock, and I'm thinking... Wow, it's not even dark yet, and you're shooting him off? Well, Chewy was still in his bed at the time. He was sleeping, so um, I didn't have to worry, because I know if he'd have been outside that, and they would have started shooting him off, he'd have come running in the house. He would have wanted in, because it's hard on dog's ears. I don't like it. It's hard enough on my ears. Could you, could you imagine how hard it is on the dog's ears? They're very, very sensitive, and they just can't take loud noises. Because I know the dog that my son used to have the golden retriever she was really frightened at um of noises like that she would just oh she would cry and howl and everything because it hurt her ears so bad yeah you can't put earplugs in the dog's ears unfortunately you can't do that their ear their ears are so sensitive i'm almost tempted to put earplugs in them but i i finally did fall asleep i was <laughs> i was i was watching something on Prime Video and I finally did fall asleep right in the middle of it and I just turned my iPad off and went to sleep so I don't know how long they shut them off because I went to sleep you know but I'm kind of glad it's over with now I mean it was just one day it was just a just another day to me I don't it's no special day you know when you're alone it's no special day you just you don't spend it with anybody you just spend it by yourself so you do what you want you know and, and you know and I didn't worry about it but now now we got that holiday over you know <laughs> We don't have any holidays now, I think, until Labor Day. Labor Day is the next one. And then, and then after Labor Day, then they start coming quite regularly. So then they, they creep up on you pretty fast. So it's hard to believe, you know. Half, over half this year has gone already. I'm, I'm thinking, wow, where did it go? Man, it's, it's just uncanny. Over half the year is gone. And we're, we're going on the downward spiral to the, towards the end of the year. Just makes no sense, does it? for it to be going that fast. The days seem to be, to me, I don't know how they are to you, but to me, they seem to be going a lot faster. Um, it seems like the 24 hours, is, it seems like it's going a lot faster than it was. Um, I know every day is the same, but it just seems like the time is just slipping right on by, especially if I'm busy doing something. Like when I was organizing my kitchen yesterday and rearranging my countertop, the time was going so fast, and before I knew it, it was time to get lunch, and that, or my daughter was calling. Um, yeah, be three, October, you're right, Linda. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. It's the end time, so things are going to go pretty doggone fast. A lot faster than, than they normally would. So, uh, but, you know, it is, it is what it is, and there isn't a whole heck of a lot we can do about it. You know, we just have to deal with it. But I could be doing something, and time will get away from me, and I'll look at the clock, and I says, is that late already? Time gets away from me so fast that I, I, I'm not... I'm not paying attention to the time and then, then the next thing you know it's gone you know before I know it Sabbath's going to be here it's going to be here for, to, for some like Erlene's going to be here quicker for her than will me um, so by the time the 7 o'clock rolls around for me she's already in Sabbath so um, it's going to come around pretty doggone fast again um, I won't be uh, going to church tomorrow so those that, that like my prophecy scopes I, I know Valerie does Erlene does those that like like the religious scopes, I'll be doing one tomorrow in the morning. Um, after I talk to my daughter, I'm going to come on here and do a scope. Um, oh, happy pre-Sabbath to you too. I'll be doing a scope tomorrow since I'm not going to church because we have a um, 
light bearers can't meet, so they always close the church for that. So after I talk to my daughter, then I'm gonna think of a topic and get it ready and come in and, and do a, a periscope. Um, so those that want to come in can come into those. If you don't want to, that's fine. Um, but anyway, the weather here is not too bad right now. It seems to be um, pretty decent. I wish we'd get some rain though, but you know, it is what it is. Some places like my daughter, she lives in an area in Missouri where they get so much rain all summer long. But here in Oregon, we just don't get the rain. It shuts off. Like I said, it'll shut off May or June or whatever. And you don't get rain until the end of September, early October. Usually on Halloween is when it starts pouring down rain. Um, usually even before that, but it just, that night just pours down. Um, I haven't in a long time, but yes, I do. Yes. I do watch Amazing Facts. I watch Amazing Discoveries, too. Uh, oh, it's supposed to rain there tonight, Ernie. Well, if you need it, that's good. But if you don't need it, it, you know, it's not so good. I know my daughter, she doesn't need any rain either because they have so much because they get a, they get so bad flooding there because of the Merrimack River. You have the Mississippi River. They always overflow their banks to get on the road. So she's in a, she's a, she doesn't live close to the Mississippi or close to the Merrimack. But where she would take my son-in-law to work, she would have to go down these roads that would start to be flooded. Um, I bet it is. Well, mine is too because I water it every few days. Um, oh, you're still under a river flood warning? Oh, my goodness. Ugh. Wow. That is horrible. See, my daughter, she's in a situation where they're still under a river flood warning. She, when, when my son-in-law starts his job on the 15th, I hope it's not flooded by then because she may have to go down the flooded roads again. It's terrible. You know, you go down the road and all of a sudden there's water there. Um, been under one since March. Whoa! That's an awful long time to be under a flood watch. Oh my goodness. Oh man. The river should have should have uh, crested and, and started going down by now. But I guess you, the more rain you get, the harder it is to get them to recede because they're just going to keep filling up more and more and more. Uh, um, this one... Well, hummus sometimes is like a staple. You can put it on. You can put it with a salad or whatever. But this and I can use it with uh, um, graham crackers, which I have right here. You can use it with apple slices. You can use it with uh, maybe pear slices. Somebody mentioned you could put it on a sweet potato because this is a sweet hummus, so you can put it on anything sweet. Um, oh, okay, it's snow melting. Um, and you can use uh, yeah, you can use it for veggies too. Oh, well, this is a sweet one. I don't know how it would taste with the veggies, but you could try it. But hummus is a hummus is more or less like a dip, Linda, where you you put you dip your veggies in it. I've put hummus on a salad before. I've made it like a salad dressing. Uh, my daughter-in-law says, "Well, I've never heard people doing that." I said, "Well, I'm, I'm let me be the first." But you can do with it whatever you want. But this is particularly, I'm going to make put graham cra uh, dip graham crackers in it. Uh, yeah, this one is a banana. This is a uh, a, a <laughs> banana bread one, Linda. This is a sweet one. Um, how come you don't have what? The Adventist Sisters. What do you mean the Adventist Sisters? Um, you have to explain what you mean. Because <laughs> I'm not quite comprehending. But anyway, Linda... This is a sweet one. You, I'll take the graham cracker and I'll dip it in here. And it makes real good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Real good hummus. Mm. It's got two bananas in it. Two bananas and walnuts, uh, coconut oil, um, vanilla. It's got, um, uh, I think that's about it. That's uh, your chickpeas. It's got one can of chickpeas. That's the... That's the normal. You can't make hummus without chickpeas. However, you can make it without tahini because uh, most of the ones that I've seen have tahini. But I've been finding more and more now on Pinterest that don't have tahini. Um, absolutely. We are. Yes, we are. All. Yes, we are. Um, I have been finding more and more um, hummus that you can make without tahini. Um, yeah, 
especially in the summertime. But you know what I do with mine, Linda? When they start getting black, getting real spotty, I just peel them and I and I freeze them, and I use them for banana, uh, for like banana ice cream, banana and chocolate ice cream, or banana and fruit ice cream, or whatever. I save, I freeze them up for ice cream. Uh, they're they're real good for that because they're nice and sweet. Because there's no sense of throwing them away. I've got two right now that I need to uh, freeze up, put in, put it, put in the freezer, take the peeling off. I've seen people peel, put them in the freezer with the peeling on. You can't get the peeling off once you do that. You gotta freeze them up. Um, banana. That's what this. This is what. Yeah, but you need. Um, you need fresh bananas for that, though, Linda. You can't use the frozen bananas for this. It had to be fresh. So I happen to have fresh bananas. Um, I was using the ones I, I, that are, um, are trying to turn brown. I used a couple of those, but you really need fresh bananas. Uh, most, like I said, most of the time with the bananas go, and they do go south fast, especially in the heat. Um, you just pick them and peel them and put them in a, in a freezer bag and, you know, put uh, freeze them up for your ice cream. That's what Alexis does. Now, I don't take the time to cut mine up before I freeze them like Alexis does. Hi, good to see you. I just, I've got a, a, chop, a chopping knife that I got from Pampered Chef that I just use that and chop the pup in pieces. Um, I'm just great. And how are you? And I just chop the pieces up and put them in my food processor, blender, or whatever. Um, today I had, I bought some corn at Walmart. They were five for a dollar, so I bought some corn, had some corn for lunch, and oh, wonderful. And I then I fixed me a tomato soup that I've made before in my Vitamix. It's, it's got cashews in it, water, um, a, I think a cup of tomatoes, a, a fourth a cup of cashews, a half a cup of water, and it's got some salt in it. Not much to it, but it I, I put it in my Vitamix and, and uh, heat it up and got my soup made in 6 minutes and 30 seconds. And I was eating that while I was waiting for the corn to get done in my cook cooker. So I had a good lunch. So I'll probably have some ice cream a little bit later as soon as I thaw a little bit of it out. But... This it can be used anytime. This can be this can be used as a snack, really. You have a like pears. You have um, apple slices. Apples are real good to eat anytime. Um, um. So how long would that? Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know. Then it'll be put in the refrigerator, but it's not gonna it's not gonna last me long anyway. If you eat it up enough, it will, it'll last you, or it won't last, and you and you. Because um, I've got graham crackers, and I'm going to use graham crackers on this. I've, I've got, I have forgot to buy me some apples today. I need to do that. I don't have any pears either. But I can try veggies with it too. And it, uh, Something like this would be good for a snack instead of always getting in like a, a potato chips, Brussels, or something like this. This is going to be a better snack. Because um, I don't have a tendency to get into uh, <laughs> potato chips and pretzels. I like them only too much. you know. But if I, but if I can eat this... Instead of potato chips, potato chips and pretzels, you're a lot better off. Hummus is real good. It's a good staple. It's more or less, basically, Linda, it's just a dip. Use it in any way you want. You can dip your veggies in it. Now, this is like, since this is sweet, uh, you can probably put your veggies in it, but it'd be better for sweeter items like your apples and your pears, um, some of your other fruits. Somebody mentioned sweet potato. It probably would be real good on a sweet potato. It would flavor it right up, you know. So you could put anything on anything real, real sweet. Take a banana and dip it into it too. So um, it's whatever you choose to use it for. I decided to make this because I had never made it before. And when I saw it on Pinterest, I thought, this is an unusual hummus. I have never made this kind of hummus. Somebody said they, had, they ate the chocolate hummus and left an aftertaste. Well, since I don't use real chocolate, I don't use carob, I don't think there'll be a problem with that. But I do have a chocolate peanut butter hummus that I do want to try and see if it does leave an aftertaste. I won't know unless I try it. But with carob, I never have that problem. Chocolate, yes, it can leave an aftertaste. I, I know that. But I've never had a problem with the carob leaving an aftertaste. So that's a good thing. Um, but you can give this a try. It's not doesn't take long to make it. Just a very few, few minutes to make it. And it, it comes out just nice in the food processor. Um, you can the walnuts are chopped up, and that gives a good flavor too. You got, I mean, it's almost like eating banana bread before it's baked. Eating the batter of the banana bread—that's almost what this is like, because uh, you, uh, banana bread. If you've ever had banana bread, it is so good. This tastes just like a piece of banana bread unbaked. Um, oh, well, oh well, 
I don't, uh, I don't eat meat. Uh, yeah, I wish you uh, don't bring up meat in here. This is a vegan scope, and I don't eat meat in here. Um, anyway, um, this can be used for any of your sweet items that you have. Um, it's a very good dip. Um, hummus, like I said, is a staple in a lot of people's home. My daughter said she loves hummus, but she wants to find one with no tahini. I says, well, I've got a cup. There's a couple on my vegan page that are not, not don't have tahini. This one does it. So she'll have another one that she can try, you know, and it's simple to try, simple to do. She just has to get herself a good food processor, or what, you know, simple one and put it in there and with her bananas and, and uh, walnuts and stuff. And I think she's going to like it. Um, yeah, it really is a very healthy snack. Like I said, it's healthier than getting into potato chips, pretzels and stuff like that, which I'm guilty. I do it. You know, I think we all do it. You know, get. Your, I'm guilty of, of getting, because they're so good, you know. But this is a lot better, where you can, you're eating something healthy, it's good for you, and you eat apples, or you eat pears. They're, they're naturally sweet anyway, and they're better for you than potato chips, pretzels, or all the other stuff that uh, they have out there that entice people to eat them. Donuts. Some people eat donuts for snacks. Oh, my goodness. Ugh, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I buy them once in a while, but I don't eat them for a snack. Uh, oh, yeah, you will, sweetie. You'll like it. If nobody else in the family eats it, but you'll eat it because it's really good. You just have to get yourself some chopped walnuts and, and get yourself some coconut oil. You can get that at Walmart. And you don't have to worry about tahini because there isn't any. You just have your bananas, you know, close to, you know, semi-ripe. And you, I'll post the recipe up on my vegan Facebook page. You'll be able to uh, get it there, and I'll show the, I'll put, take a picture of the hummus, because I know people are going to want to try this. I mean, I was willing to try. It. I thought I've got to try this. You know me, I'm always wanting to try something new. And when I saw this recipe, I thought, hmm, banana bread hummus. Never heard of it because I've seen roasted, uh, roasted almond hummus. I've got a lot of different hummuses out there. Um, no, probably. Well, it might, but I think the the uh, if you can get yourself a cheap uh, food processor, you can get them at Walmart. Get yourself a good food processor. I saw one at Walmart for fifty dollars. It's not that really that bad. It's actually uh, not bad for fifty dollars. I wouldn't get a I wouldn't get a twenty dollar one because it probably won't hold up. But get yourself a good good food processor and just basically use it for stuff like this that you wouldn't put in the blender. Because I use it, you know, for this and I used it for ice cream before. If that's what it called for, but. Um, you might be able to try the blender for it, but I think it would be better in the food processor. Um, you could, you, you know, might do it on low in the in the uh, Ace blender. Um, but uh, those of you that were on my Periscope yesterday, you saw me use the uh, blender from Instant Pot. It's called the Instant Pot Ace. Um, and I made I made some uh, tomato soup in there, and I'm going to save that for tomorrow. That's for my Sabbath lunch. I didn't want to eat it today, but well, I'll just make a. I'll just make a, a uh, tomato soup in the Vitamix and uh, have it ready and eat some eat three some three ears of corn I bought at Walmart, put them in my quick cooker. So I use my quick cooker and Vitamix today for lunch. <laughs> uh no. I don't the reason I don't is because my son is teaching Sabbath school and the class that he's te he's teaching, we do not use the Sabbath school quarterly. We're using something altogether different. We're in the book Steps to Christ right now. So I don't know them because I don't know what you guys, because I don't have the lesson study to do that. Um, anyway, um, I'll be doing a religious scope tomorrow. I'm not sure what. But anyway, this hummus will be very good for those that may not like hummus, but if you eat something like this, a sweet hummus, then you may like hummus. There are some hummuses I probably wouldn't try, but this is a sweet one. And uh, I thought, well, I might as well give it a try. You know, you don't, if I don't like it, I never make it again. But who doesn't like bananas? Me, I love bananas. And this, like I said, you, this is like dipping your graham cracker in a, in a slice of banana bread because it's so close. I mean, look at the, I mean, just look at that. Isn't that awesome? It looks really, it tastes very, very good. Welcome, Tammy. Thank you for coming in. It tastes very, very good. Um, it's an awesome recipe. It's very easy to make, uh, you know. And I know my daughter, she's trying to make some of it. Wants to make some of it. She wants to make that cheesecake that I made. She wants to make some hummus because she loves hummus. I don't think anybody else in the family loves it, but she loves hummus. 
You can use the hummus any way you choose to use it. You can dip it. You know, whatever you choose to use it on, you can, you can use it. Um, I'm not going to, like I said, this is going to go up on my vegan Facebook page. And I'm going to go ahead and put the recipe up there and see how many people try it and see if they really like it. Because I'm sure that if you, if you start to eating the hummus, you're going to like it. There's don't, so many different kinds out there. So many different kinds. Ro I think it was roasted roasted red pepper hummus. That's what it was. And I thought, well, I don't want to roast the, roast the peppers. Um, yeah, he has. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he has. He hasn't been bothering me anymore. I, I blocked him. I blocked him on YouTube, and he has not come back. I keep because I get notifications when I get a when I get to a comment up on YouTube, and I get a notification. It'll pop up on my phone. I have no notifications whatsoever. And when there are new ones, I go in there and check to see what they are. But he has not. No. So that's a good thing. <sighs> Which I got rid of him. But anyway. This is something that I think everybody want to try. Oh, darn I bad Wi-Fi, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Sometimes it can be rough. Well, like I said, I broadcast from my phone, but anytime I watch, I watch I watch replays from my, my iPad. Uh, you're right, Linda. He does. But, you know, I laid in bed one night. This was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I couldn't go to sleep. And I thought, there has got to be a way to stop him from, from posting in my YouTube. So I, did, I Googled it, and it said that you can block him. So I, try, so I found out how to do it, because everybody on Google, everybody that has, has a Google has a, a page, whether it has anything on it or not. Now, he just didn't have any um, content in his whatsoever. But we all, you have a Google, you have a Gmail um, account. You automatically have a YouTube account, okay? So I went in there and I found, I, I kept the, fortunately, I was smart enough and I kept the comment up there, the last one that he made, because if I had deleted the comment, there would have been no way I could have gone into his his um, channel and blocked him. I kept the comment up there, because I didn't report it or anything, because I figured, well, I've got to block him now, so I don't have to report. So I clicked on his, his profile, brought his page up, and at the very top, I was able to block him. And I got him out of there, and then I went and, and removed his comment. Because if I had removed his comment, there would have been no way I could have blocked him on his page. Uh, um, yeah, it is. They have to be on. But, off, but like I'm saying, Linda, anybody that has Google Mail email automatically has a YouTube channel, whether you have any content in it or not. His has no content. He had one subscriber, and I'm thinking, boy, who wonder who that person is? One subscriber. Huh, that person's got to be crazy to subscribe to that guy, you know, unless he, so he can't subscribe to himself, you know, but who knows. Anyway, I blocked him, and I've had no problems since, and I'm glad of that, you know. Uh. <laughs> his mother, yeah, maybe, maybe you're late. somebody in his family, you know, brother, sister, mother, father, who knows. Who really knows, you know, but, <laughs> but you know, it feels good. To be able to come in here, be able to do these periscopes, have drama free, not have a criticism by him or anybody else for that matter. It feels so good. It, I, I love coming in here and doing these because I'm finding new recipes. And I know that you all want to learn how to, how to make new things. And this hummus is something that I'm sure you're going to want to try. It's sweet. And if you like sweets, as I know you do, this will be a good hummus for everybody to try. Their kids will love it too. I just know it. I think I'm going to go for now because I want to uh, clean my kitchen up a little bit. So, with that being said, I'm going to go for now. And I'll hold this up and this will be my final shot. I hope you all have a great and marvelous day. And those that are going to be in Sabbath, happy Sabbath. Hope your Sabbath is a blessed one. And I will come on tomorrow in lieu of church because we don't have church. But I will come on tomorrow and do a, I'll do a periscope in the morning. Um, so, I hope you all have a great and marvelous day. Take care. God bless. Until we meet again. Bye-bye.